strong that they're playing good teams, but those good teams just aren't as strong as these excellent programs. Just uh, this one program, like I mentioned, they, they're in the playoffs every year. A lot of years they can come to the championship game. They've won some state championships. They just keep doing it. And uh, it's tough for a team like Sachs that isn't used to it. They have a great season this year, but they're not used to playing in, in this kind of a setting under this kind of pressure uh, against a, a great team like Blunt. Five yard step off helps a little bit. First and five now from their own 10. They'll get two, maybe three yards on that carry and just tracing the history a little bit for uh, Bullen High School. The last time they made the long drive up I-65, it was to Homewood High School, about 10 minutes from Legion Field. And Homewood was a 17-12 winner over Blunt in the, uh, the deluge, some of the worst weather conditions I've ever seen for a, a football game of any type, any level, but uh, the rain certainly slowed down Blunt in that one. And you look back and in, uh, they were not a part of the, the 5A championship in 1994. Prior to that though, they had a, a pretty, uh, pretty good run of appearances in that 5A championship game in fact the uh, squad from Blunt High School made it to the second round in 1994 in 90 or in 93 actually excuse me in 92 they won the title being Ru beating Russellville 29 to 15 and in 91 Blunt was a loser in the championship game. They've, uh, they have been pretty much a uh, staple in the 5A title game in the 90s. Well, just there, what a great play by Justin Cooley. It looked like Sachs running back had some room there and just Cooley comes rushing up from his defensive back position and makes the short tackle. There it is again, he's got some room and then all of a sudden, bang, you're down. You know, this is the thing that, that you love about high school athletics, though, is that these guys from Sachs aren't giving up. We saw it in the 1A game. Lee Cagle, kid who's a part of the, of the losing end of a 45-6 to six ball game when his Lynn Bears fell big to Maplesville High School in that title game. But Cagle rushes for over 300 yards. Mm -hmm. in that contest 37 carries he's in there till the end and yeah you'd never want to guess he was on the losing side right. would you if you just heard that stat i want to talk about number 58 there demarco mcneil you just saw him pick up that loose ball that was not ruled a fumble and he's in on that play there he's been in plays all night long what a great night for mcneil for the leopards second down and a long nine they stay on the ground and give it to Graham. A lot of people maybe scratching their heads and saying, why aren't you throwing the football right here? But uh, again, if you just tuned in, the starting quarterback, Josh Green, out of the game, possibly with a broken left arm. He's got a cast on that arm. You got a younger quarterback. Your team's already down 30. The, uh, the prospects are winning, very slim. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put your team in a situation where they can't do things they're capable of and, and maybe allow Blunt to really make this one ugly. Cheatwood on the carry and gets almost out of bounds and very near the 25-yard line. Going to be shy of the first down. Just watch the defensive pursuit. Almost got him there, and then the rest, the reinforcements come in. And on fourth and a long three, Coach Johnson electing to punt. And there's a bunch of blunt leopards that in just a moment will uh, probably start the official celebration. I saw the coaches from Blunt go down at the start of the fourth quarter. They're already on the sidelines with their teammates, not a, with their players, I should say, not a whole lot more they can say from up top. And we've got a flag before the snap of the football. Official himself went to receive it, but uh, could not haul it in. Can we give him a turnover there? <laughs> Delay a game, the call. You know, so far we haven't really had 
a championship game among these first four of the Super Six that that even came close to going down to the wire. Hoping tomorrow when they have the 3A championship and the and the 6A that maybe we'll have some of that. Of course, all six the championship games will be on the Alabama cable network. You've had a chance to see the Mountain Brook team, yeah. Class 6A every week and. I'm joking at halftime, I was giving, we were visiting with uh, Joey Jones, head coach of the Spartans, and I was telling him that uh, you're taking credit for that turnaround there instead of him. <laughs> you both came in at the same time. That's Who right. knows? Well, actually, he beat me by just a little bit. He's been with them since uh, since they started lifting weights, you so know. So he got the offseason. Yeah. Big yeah. deal. <laughs> I also <laughs> accused him of dressing out when I saw what Mount Brook was doing the first six weeks of the season. I thought maybe he was, instead of coaching, he was playing. But uh, Well, I'll tell you, Joey Jones and his staff have done a tremendous job in their first year. And they look like a Joey Jones offense. Once you see, see their offense, man, you don't know what's coming next. They do all kinds of things. I want to know who had the guts on that team, if anybody, to ask for the number four. <laughs> Was there anybody? I'm going to have to think about that. Lots of running room for Blunt down the right sideline is on the carry. Another one of those young guys we talked about, Terrence Delaney, 5'8", 165, and a freshman. Mm. And he's getting a carry in a state championship game. There it is again. He gets a good block there and turns on the speed. Look at him break those tackles. Got through that shirt tackle there. He's still going. And, and really not a lot of reserves in the game for sacks because they just don't have that many yeah. bodies to put in. That, yeah. uh, the guy trying to make the tackle was Ryan Wells, who has played much of this football game. And while there are some fresh faces and fresh legs out there for Blunt, these are some tired defenders for the Wildcats. You're looking it up. David so, Avert is number four for Mountain Brook. Is he a wide out? No. He's not a wide out. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> he's not real gutsy then. Take, he, uh, to take Coach Jones, he's one of the young been pretty good. He's one of the young players. He plays in the defensive backfield. Well, he's a junior. I was thinking he was a sophomore, but he's a junior. Second down and six. Good hit, 44, Lawrence Bradford with the play. The last time Mountain Brook won a state title, Major Ogilvy was the workhorse in that one. Yeah, and he gained like 712 yards in that game. So <laughs> <laughs> Something like yeah, that. Yeah, in that neighborhood. Back in the 70s. Inside the 25-yard line on that carry, again, was... Uh, Leonce Williams, and if I'm mispronouncing that, my apologies. Fourth down in decision time for Ben Harrison. I would imagine he'd go for it here, not in an attempt to run it up, but it's uh, it's not really an area to punt. We saw the leg of the place kicker earlier, not really uh, his range right here, so not much else you can do. And plus, these young guys deserve an opportunity to, to try and do something as well offensively. They will call timeout. Will the Leopards with 3.46 left to play. Blunt about to capture the 1996 5A state title. Cues are rocks. It was a stone gas. <laughs> Cool, it's cool as ice, man. Cues are located in the Estro Oak Shopping Center at 3690 Airport Boulevard. For over a decade, Hills Children's Shoes have provided footwear for kids from infants to teenagers. They know the importance of comfortable, durable shoes for children of all ages. Sneakers, sandals, dress shoes, school uniform shoes, dance shoes, and even cleats for soccer and baseball. We have popular shoe lines from Stride Right, Willets, Bass, Keds, LA Gear, New Balance, and many more. Don't forget accessories like shoestrings and hair bows, all at Hills Children's Shoes on Azalea Road next to service merchandise. Let your kids grow up with us. On the fourth down attempt, Blunt stops short and Sacks will take over, but uh, won't do much as far as the outcome, but it'll make Sacks feel a little bit better as they.
head back home tonight towards Calhoun County. That's right. That's right. Good to see him still playing hard out there. And like we mentioned earlier, here they are. They're, they're getting beaten pretty bad here, 29 nothing. But but believe me, they're getting beaten 29 nothing by an excellent high school football team. And what a great year Sachs has had. This, this is really one of those that an hour from now probably won't hurt as bad as if this were a 29-28 game. Right. And they'd lost. You right. said it. This is this has been a dream year for uh, Sachs High School. Uh, one of the best, if not the best, in school history. Just the third time since 1974 they have been above the 500 mark for a mm. season. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you've just gone as far as you can go. And, and if, you, if you've done the very best you can, that's all you can ask. That's right. That's right. So, uh, really, congratulations to all 12 teams that made it to the Super Six. They all had great years. And our thoughts with Josh Green, the uh, starting quarterback for Sachs High School. He left late in the third, early in the fourth quarter with a possible broken arm. In fact, they have uh, now taken him to Baptist Hospital. I would imagine Princeton Hospital being the, uh, the closest of the two Baptist hospitals here in the Birmingham area uh, to get some x-rays on that arm. That'll the final three minutes of this one, and, and Blunt's going to win another state championship. This is a chance to preview those matchups a little bit. Uh, the 6A matchup, you've got Jeff Davis, a team that was here one year ago in the 6A state championship game against Central Tuscaloosa. A little bit of, uh, uh, I don't know if revenge is the right word, but much the same situation as Blunt here tonight, trying to, uh, to maybe just take it one step further than a year ago. And boy, what a great team led by Jeffrey Aaron, the quarterback. Yeah, there is. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that 6-8 game. I think that that may end up being the best game out of the Super 6. You never know, but uh, uh, I, I think that's an exciting looking matchup between Matt Brook and Jeff Davis tomorrow. Wide out to each side of the field for Sacks. First and 10 for their own 37. And a big hit there and a flag on the play. Well, to get here, Sachs had to uh, start things off by beating a, an experienced and highly ranked North Jackson team. They did that by four points. Turn around and beat a, another rival from the uh, Calhoun County area, south side of Gaston. Just a, a six-point victory there. Then Sachs takes on a, an explosive Birmingham City School. Jackson Olin wins that one by four and wins by four over Bradshaw just a week ago. So a, a lot to be proud of. The games mm -hmm. have been close when they won, but uh, they're on the short end of a uh, pretty lopsided game in this one, 29 to nothing. And you mentioned Blunt coming back this year after losing in the championship game last last year. They graduated 20 seniors from that team last year, still managed to come back and be this good and win the state championship. It is amazing, and, and really this game pretty indicative of some other playoff matchups uh, for Blunt. Big winners over Hillcrest of, uh, trying to make sure I got my brackets right here. Yeah, over uh, Hillcrest of Tuscaloosa by a score of 46-10. They uh, are able to beat Wetumpka fairly easily, 34-19, the final there, or excuse me, Jackson High School, 34-12, and then uh, a 19-10 winner over Wetumpka, 30 to nothing, the uh, final in the semifinal between Blunt and Demopolis, and uh, this one could hold here, but a nice throw and catch there by Sachs High School. That was Hargrove on the receiving end of a pass from Tyler Haynes. And the junior getting some good experience, trying to get this guy ready for next season and hoping that he can lead Sachs back to the championship again. Throws a pass there, complete nice pass and catch. This Blunt team, uh, not only are they going to win the state championship, but they are going to finish an undefeated season as well. Haynes, a straight drop back, and oh. it's picked off. Picked off the 35. And just running around trying to stay on his feet was the defensive back Justin Cooley in a face mask on the end of that play. And if he hasn't already, I got a feeling that Ben Harris is about to get that much colder. It's 
a bit chilly out here, but I think they've got a uh, water bucket with his name on it. Yeah. Cooley's had a good night uh, for Blunt as you get a look at Roger Hargrove. He's the intended receiver on that play. I feel a little bit dejected right now. Sort of the Sax players are, are disappointed. They can attack on 15 yards to the end of that play. And it'll be excellent field position for Blunt with just a minute and a half to go. Our cameras are on the scene. And we're going to get the ceremonial soaking, I think, coming your way in just a moment. Yeah, leave it with a tail back. He picks up a couple. They have really gotten this thing to an art form. You got to wait till the coach gets distracted, and I think they got him. Yeah. They didn't get 